I have a confession. I used to have a really good sense of style that somehow went out the window because it just was so hard to make time to go shopping and even doing online shopping and returns. It seriously stresses me out. And that's why I love Armoire because it lets me rent high quality designer clothing for every occasion and regain my sense of style. Whether you're planning your outfit for a date night, packing for a conference or in need of a gown for a black tie event, you will be the best dressed person in a room without ever having to brave a fitting room with fluorescent lights, which is my literal nightmare. What I love about Armoire is that the more I rent, the more on point the suggestions get, and Armoire starts to know my style and what will fit well. Right now, our listeners can give Armoire a try and get up to 50% off their first month. That's up to 125 off. Just visit armoire.style slash datable. That's armoire.style, A-R-M-O-I-R-E dot style slash datable to get up to 50% off your first month and never worry about what to wear again. Try our more today. Hi, I'm Yui Shu. And I'm Julie Kraftchik. We're active daters turned dating sociologists. Here to dive into everything modern dating and relationships. Welcome to the Dateable Podcast. Hello, friends. Welcome back to Dateable. Off season, on season, middle season. <laughs> In between season, situation season, situationship. Here we are. <laughs> in between, but we are re airing some of the podcasts that we've been on. And then today we have a treat because we are re airing our exit interview, mm -hmm. the very first episode. And for all of our new listeners, exit interview before the book was our first labor of love. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Right. Took us, wow, how long did it take oh, us to produce it? It was like over show? a year that we worked right. on it. And right. yeah, for anyone that is new to Dateable or anyone that maybe forgot, it's been a while. We know a lot's going on in your own worlds too. And we did this ex a social experiment. We actually did it with our one of our moderators of the Facebook group, Jason. We'll give him a shout out. We did mm -hmm. this on Dateable. We'll link this in the show notes also. But we did kind of like this, this experiment where we called up some of Jason's past dates to find out what was going on because he came to us and he was just like, none of my dates go anywhere. I get all yeah. these matches on dating apps. I go on dates, but no one wants to go on a second date. And we're like, there's no way we can tell you what's going on, but we know nope. who can. It's the people that you went out with and we are going to hit them all up. And we did. We called up five <laughs> of his former dates and got the deets. And it was eye opening for all parties because there was just a lot of miscommunication, yes. a lot of assumptions, a lot of misinterpretation. It just shows you that you have your story, they have their story, and neither of those are actually what happened no. <laughs> during the date. So we blew this up into a bigger concept called the exit interview. We were able to make an entire series out of it. Every episode features a new dater and new exes or former flings or former dates where we dive into a problem that they're trying to get the answer for. So this first episode we're going to re-air today with Tia is she is your typical cool girl. <laughs> yes, she is. Cool girl syndrome, CGS. She has it to the T. <laughs> it's like, you know, you just want to be chill about everything. You don't, you don't want to rock the boat. You don't want to push for things. You don't want to scare someone away. But at the same time, you've not addressed any of your needs. Just trying to preserve your identity as this cool, I'm chill, I'm cool. I'm all good. I was the cool girl for so long. I had same, major same. CGS. And it's funny because I'm not the cool girl in any other part of my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would not describe you as no, like chill. I'm not. In, I'm yeah. type A. Mm -hmm. But in dating, I think this stemmed from, you know, just culture and norms and upbringing and yeah. all the stuff. And I just was like, hey, you know, I need to just, you know, lean back. And mm -hmm. I, I can't text first. I can't make Make my needs no. known. I can't rock the boat. And no. I just was very passive. And then the problem with that, though, is that it built up in my head. And I got really of resentful course. of people. And like, yeah. to the point, like, if someone hadn't texted me for like a couple days, instead of just reaching out to them, I would be so anxious, like waiting for that text. And then when they finally did, I'd be resentful because it took so long. The problem is 
all stems from the narrative we've been told by society where you've all, you know, you've all dated people who said, oh, I was dating someone that was so needy. Yeah. I was dating needy. someone who, Ooh. oh gosh, who was so clingy, you know, someone who was so annoying, like always communicating and always asking for things. So it made us think, oh, that's bad. Yep. Asking for things is bad. Being needy is bad. That's the last thing you want to be. So let's like really repress all of our needs just so we don't become that needy person. And in the end, who do you fuck over? Yourself. Yeah. I mean, I read so many dating books. Like when I, (laughs) I think I've read like every dating book out there because, you know, I always say I was a later bloomer. You know, I feel like I didn't really get into dating until like mid 20s. And I just Mm -hmm. didn't know where to even start. Like the good student I was, I decided that (laughs) I would just go read every book. She she get her PhD in dating. (laughs) And, you know, it played off. Here we are now. But I think (laughs) every book, the common piece was don't be too needy. And that's why I wasn't needy. And what I love about our book, I'm giving it a plug, is that we do the exact opposite. We're like, that doesn't work. That doesn't work in reality. And we're not going to like feed you BS because we know it works and what doesn't. Oh, thanks for bringing it back to our book. That is the answer to everything. (laughs) If you are suffering from CGS, cool girl syndrome or CGG, cool guy no cgs no that's also cgs cool guy syndrome you will find a remedy in this book and the overarching idea we have is that modern dating has set us up to fail it is giving us all the wrong advice giving us all the wrong infrastructure for us to focus on the shitty things that don't matter like your fucking profile that nobody cares about or like your bio that you're spending hours and hours thinking about every which word like what what do I say here those are not transferable skills to a relationship no. yet so many of you want a relationship so our book ho- Hopefully, we are creating this mindset. It's like, no, modern dating is setting you up to fail. Let's rise above it. I wish I had this book when I was 20. I really do. Mm -hmm. I think I could have saved a lot of time and heartbreak and being inauthentic. I think that's what it was, like all the shitty rules and like, I don't know. I I think like our book obviously falls in self-help, but I feel like it's like almost like anti-dating. Yes, It's the anti-dating dating dating book. It really is. But I feel like all these self-help books were trying to morph me into someone I wasn't. And that showed up on dates. Like I remember being like so single, like going on all these dates. And my best friend just being, I don't understand. Like you have no problem meeting people in any other part of life. Yet like nothing can stick with dating. And it's because I was a totally different person. Because you were trying to mold yourself into what society told you you had to be in order to be dateable. And ironically, our book is called How to Be Dateable. And there's no one way to be dateable. Well, everyone's dateable. You're, yeah. <laughs> everyone's date. You are all inherently dateable. And don't let anybody else tell you any different. The only time you are not dateable is when you are being inauthentic to yourself. You are hiding parts of yourself in order to accommodate this vision of a dateable person that nobody is fulfilling. That is just not a real person. Yeah, I think it's modern dating that doesn't make us dateable like we're inherently dateable yes and it's modern dating that's fucking us over (laughs) and trapping us as we talk about and causing us not to be dateable and then once you can see that and you know rise above it and lift those blinders off of how it's fucking Mm -hmm. us basically that's when you become dateable so yeah i know like one of your you were telling me like you went to this house party and people are like what does how to be dateable mean (laughs) (laughs) i really do think like this is a message we say all the time it's like everyone is dateable everyone is dateable everyone's dateable but you don't need to be good at dating to be dateable you just need to get out of your own way i think that is exit interview to a core right is learning how you're in your own way and getting out of it yes And throughout this episode, you'll learn how Tia goes from recognizing she has cool girl syndrome to how can she start speaking up for herself more. And you'll also learn about this misconnection she has with someone she went on a date with and how crazy it is. Like they wasted all this time assuming so many that assumptions. they weren't they weren't going to work out when it was truly a misconnection. So yeah, you're going to get a lot of, out of this episode and afterwards you may be inspired to pre-order our book, which is so important. Yes. 
It really is. Pre-orders are so ridiculous, but the publishing industry is so funny in that way where pre-orders really count towards our first week sales. And that first week sales numbers are what every list looks at. It's like when this book debuts, mm, let's see how many first week sales they have. So your pre-orders mean everything in terms of us being recognized by lists, us being on bookshelves in bookstores, yeah. and us just being respected by all these uh, book aficionados. I mean, I think it's really like the part that keeps me up at night about book sales. <laughs> <laughs> pre-orders, like that will help us be on bookshelves that will help with distribution and i mean honestly obviously a being on a list would be amazing i'm not saying it wouldn't but like i just want as many people to get this book as possible yeah. because i really do believe that it will help people and like that is ultimately what our goal is to help people get out of their own way to recognize what's going on in modern dating so you can embrace all your dateability that you already have yes just let it shine through and this book will guide you through that in a way that's not rules-based or hacks-based. No. It's just in the most authentic way of you finding yourself and getting out of your own way. Yeah. I was so excited that some of our early, what they're called in the industry is galley copies. They yeah. arrived. You ain't got hers earlier than mine. And I was definitely a little like, damn, I want mine. <laughs> Where are they? <laughs> but then I I'm got mine yesterday and it just looks so beautiful. I'm so excited. And just like the inside interior, we have illustrations. It's fun. I think that's what we were really going for. And seeing it printed, even though this isn't like final copy, it's it's not hardcover. It's kind of like an early release that's more meant for us to like send to press and stuff. But still seeing something come through was it made it real. And the teal color is oh. fire. <laughs> You're using I'm fire. This teal. Two years too late, <laughs> but I'm going to use it anyway. Yeah, I love a teal color. I actually was trying to find shirts or socks that are this color. It's a very hard color to find in clothing but I need it. You is like, I'm going to just paint my walls teal. I know. I told Julie, I'm just going to wear teal for the rest of this year until our book releases. I love teal. Me too. It's a great, it's a great freaking color. And this is going to be our brand, teal. So if you're wearing teal, you're representing us. And every time you see teal, you're going to, you're going to think about us. <laughs> uh, I mean, teal was already at our colors, but it was more secondary. So now we're bringing it up. It's coming. I know we were, primary. we were purple <laughs> For so long. We're still purple. And, uh, we're still purple. <laughs> we're still purple. But teals teal are and purple. Teal are, <laughs> teals are in our family now. Yeah. Teals are baby and yeah, our yeah, purple is the f is the parent and <laughs> teal is the baby. Oh my God. And sometimes I hold this book like a baby because it is a freaking it baby. Took two years to write. <laughs> yeah, which is longer than when uh, conception of most kids <laughs> to birth. But yeah, this is like the longest labor ever. And <laughs> finally, it's birth. So how this works now is we have our galleys. We still have one more draft mm -hmm. of the book to go before we go to actual printing. So we will be bringing you all along for the ride because there's probably some stuff we want to add, yeah. some questions and some opinions we want to get from y'all. We want you to be part of this journey. So just like, you know, follow us on Instagram, Addable Podcast. Follow us here. Listen to the episodes because we want to get your opinions on some of the final touches. I mean, a hundred percent. I would say that people, maybe they didn't know it yet, but they've already been in this journey because we've taken everything from Datable, from all the questions mm -hmm. we get, you know, what we're hearing on Facebook, what we're hearing on Instagram, what we're hearing on the podcast. Like your, your voice is represented, but yes, there will be more explicit ways to do it. We have many, many listeners represented in the book. It's like, it's exciting. It is it's exciting. very exciting. Our friend Louise oh, yes. came and saw me a few days ago, and she was one of the first friends to hold a copy oh, of the book. So and deserving, she has, too. <laughs> well, she has two acknowledgments in the book, and I showed her. She took pictures of them because she was like, this is so exciting. I'm like, I'm excited to show you, and you're excited to see it, <laughs> you know? And it was a, such a special moment because it's like... It, you all have been along for the journey. Our friends have been along for the journey. And now we get to show you the proof of you know what we've all been working on. I mean, past sounding board members definitely remember Louise. Uh -huh. She was like, our mm -hmm. event's extraordinaire. And friend, that is how we actually I brought know. her in. We <laughs> she's a close friend of both of us. First, first and foremost, she's <laughs> <Yeah>. a friend. <laughs> but people might recognize her name from that is what I was saying. Yes, definitely. Okay, well... 
so much to go into how to be dateable.com. You can get your pre orders now. We will be doing some bonuses also that you'll get by pre ordering. But even if you pre order now, you'll get all the bonuses. So don't let that stop you. That will be getting yeah. announced soon, though. And also go to Exit Interview. You know, if you like this episode, it's a different format than Dateable. Yeah. And a lot of people told us they just loved like the deep dive and like the inner workings of how people think about dating and just the entertainment aspect. It felt like you were watching a reality TV show or listening to a reality TV show. So definitely check that out if you haven't yet. All of this will be linked in the show notes and the last kind of call out is we are going to be resuming brunch talk soon (laughs) and we need more questions to come in so feel free to leave a rating and review in spotify or apple podcasts and if you're on apple podcasts leave your question right there in Mm -hmm. the review you can just leave it right in the review if you're on spotify or you're you know more private and don't want to put your your thing, even though it's is private because no one can see your name, but whatever you do, you you can always email us and DM us and just say I left a rating and review, and here's my question. It's always a way, always, always a way. To way. Get your question to us, but yes, help with the rating and reviews. That is really important. We really want to hit that one k. We're like so close, but not there yet. So please help us. Hopefully, well, yeah, we're gonna hit it before our book releases. That's the goal. That is the goal, and yeah, we don't need to keep bringing it up if we do. <laughs> So that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you're annoyed by us talking about getting to 1K, why don't you get um, some friends to yeah, help out? Yeah, then we won't ever talk Just about it again. Second, and then we'll shut up about it <laughs> until we want to get to 2K. No, 2K is not as big a milestone. I mean, it is, but like there's something about that 1K barrier yeah, yeah, yeah. that really people are like, ooh, this is a big podcast versus not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's true. Well, we are excited to get right into it. But before we do, let's hear a message from our sponsors. Do scents evoke memories and transport you back to being on that amazing vacation again? To me, when I use Osea's Andaria Algae Body Oil, I'm instantly on the beach in Greece again. With its all-natural, uplifting notes of mango, mandarin, grapefruit, lime, and cypress, it's hard not to be in a really good mood. But this body oil is so much more. It is clinically proven to instantly improve skin elasticity and deeply moisturize, leaving skin silky and soft. And you know how people cover of it, that post-vacation glow, this is exactly what I achieved after using this body oil. It goes on so smooth and doesn't leave my skin oily or greasy. No wonder it's Osea's number one best-selling product. Get healthy, glowing skin for summer with clean, vegan skin and body care from Osea. Get 10% off your first order site-wide with code DATEABLE at OseaMalibu.com. You'll get free samples with every order and free shipping on orders over $60. Head to OSEA malibu.com and use the code d-a-t-e-a-b-l-e for 10 percent off yay it's summer my favorite season and you know what can make summer even better via hemp products need to chill out after a long day in the sun there's a via gummy for that dealing with anxiety or stress with summer travels there's a gummy for that want to set the mood in the bedroom mm, there's a gummy for that and that is actually my favorite gummy from via i'm talking about their best-selling high love gummy a unique blend of pleasure enhancing cannabinoids libido strengthening herbs and a medium dose of thc all into one one mind-blowing gummy that will awaken your senses, increase blood flow, and intensify any sexual experience. I know it's meant for sexy time, but here's a little trick for you. I actually just love taking it for some of my longer walks. It makes all my surroundings look, smell, and feel so nice. And if THC is not your thing, Via also offers a wide array of THC-free gummies. Whatever you want to be in the mood for, Via has something for you. If you're over 21 years of age, you can get 15 percent off plus a free pack of award-winning gummies with our exclusive code dateable at viahemp.com that's spelled v-i-i-a-h-e-m-p.com and don't forget to use the code dateable to get 15 percent off and a free pack of their award-winning gummies okay let's hear it from tia on the first episode of exit interview Cool girl syndrome, it's a very serious problem sweeping the nation, the globe even. When you're suffering from cool girl syndrome, you're so laid back and chill that you never stand up for yourself or what you actually want. So much so that your true feelings stay buried, building up until they explode. 
Today, we're taking on a very serious case of cool girl syndrome. We'll see if there's any hope for her. This is Exit Interview. I'm Julie Kraftchik. And I'm UHU. And we are active daters turned dating sociologists. For almost a decade now, we've been studying why people date the way they do, and we can't wait to bring it to the exit interview. You know, on our long running podcast, Dateable, we've had over 350 episodes. That is a lot. That's more than the first dates that we've gone on combined, I think. And we're so excited to bring all our learnings to this project, Exit Interview, where we're going to be talking to people's past flames, whether that's one date they've been on, a hookup an ex of many years. We're really digging into what's going on, what's holding people back from getting the love life they want. And today we're going to be talking about a very serious condition we've seen over and over again, cool girl syndrome. Our diagnosis is that our guest today, Tia, has a very serious case of CGS. And the way this is going to work, we're going to run some tests to see if our theory is correct. We're going to talk to some of Tia's past flames, people she's dated in the past, to see if they have any insights they can share. (laughs) This is all very scientific. But first, (laughs) let's talk about what exactly is cool girl syndrome. Julie, are you a reformed CGSer? Oh, hell yeah. I am so guilty. I was diagnosed, I think, when I was 18. This really should be a medical (laughs) condition. (laughs) And I think I'm just now recovering. Cool girl syndrome goes a little something like this. Okay, this is how the number goes. You go, (laughs) it's cool. It's cool if you don't text me back. It's cool if we don't set (laughs) the time for our date yet. You do your thing. Oh, you didn't tell me you were going on a three month trip till today. Okay, cool. I'm totally fine with (laughs) that. No big deal. (laughs) No big deal. Because I'm cool. You know, I have shit to do. I'm all good. (laughs) And then it builds up. And this monster inside of you is like, I'm keeping it cool. I'm keeping it cool. And then it's like, I'm no longer cool. What are we doing here? What are we? Are we boyfriend, girlfriend? Are we girlfriend, girlfriend? Are we boyfriend, boyfriend? Do I mean anything to you? And the other person goes, what the hell just happened? Oh, my God. I'm like getting PTSD listening to that. I still remember when my CGS was at its peak. And this was when I was dating in New York and I had really liked this guy and I was building up, you know, on the surface. I was like, it's cool if I don't know what we're doing next week. It's cool. We don't see each other for three weeks. It's cool. And then one day it was the day before Valentine's Day. We met up and I was like, what are we doing? Why are we in this right now? Are you wasting my time? And he's oh like, my God. hold up. Where did this come from? And we broke up that day, the night before Valentine's Day. How freaking <laughs> dramatic is that? And yeah, and the irony is that you're not communicating anything. You're just suppressing it. And really, you I hate saying this, but I can't say with confidence that the two of us are very well qualified to diagnose cool girl syndrome since we've been through it ourselves. <laughs> yes. And hopefully we'll be able to help others on their road to recovery, which brings us to our guest today, Tia. She is the coolest of cool girls. When we first met Tia, we saw her right away. We diagnosed that so fast. We're like, yep, CGS, she's got it. But what if the coolness is actually what's getting in the way of finding what she most wants? It's a real connection. So please welcome Tia. Tia, welcome to the exit interview. Do you know what you got yourself into? I really don't. I'm a little nervous and I'm one of those people that says yes to things and then thinks about it. And I'm like, ah, (laughs) you're going to walk away like I know how to be the badass bitch that I am. Oh, okay. I like that. I like that confidence boost. Here's what we know about you. We know that you live in Costa Mesa, California. You're an entrepreneur and you have a festival clothing line. You're also a marketing confidence coach with your podcast, Sexy Biz Babe. You are a cool girl through and through. So in terms of dating, you've had a rocky past. You were in an on again, off again relationship for three years. You have dated many people since then. Even though you've dated men your whole life, you recently started exploring dating women for the first time, you want to find that future partner and you're having trouble finding anything that lasts. So we're here today to answer this question. Tia, 
Is playing it cool getting in the way of what you want? Ooh, I like, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't know. What is it that you ultimately want when it comes to a relationship? Ooh, this is such a good question. I want a partner that does understand me and I understand them. They're good, the bad, the challenging, and somebody to grow, build with, you know, build our businesses, build our experience, build our travel, build our fun, and then family as well. So in the future, I do want family and kids. So we definitely want to unpack this more for sure. I want to get into the on again, off again relationship because, you know, I've been there before. A lot of our listeners have been there before. Tell us a little more about this relationship. I felt that we had this very deeper understanding of each other. He kind of cracked me open to love, but he wasn't fully available. And he did kind of let me know that. But I did want to progress, though. I wanted to be more of that partner where they're like proud of you and showing you off type of thing. And that's something that I wasn't getting. And that maybe never would get. So you weren't getting what you wanted. So you basically ended it. Yeah. The one thing that was really missing was more of that future partner where I could have a family because he wasn't really set on that. Can you tell us a little about your entrepreneurial side, your business? Because we keep hearing like, I want someone that builds a future together in that regard as well. So important for me. So I just love growing a business that I love. And I love helping women go for what they love to do, that life can be adventurous and fun and you can make money by being yourself and doing what you love. So that's what I do. And I I really do truly love it. It is really hard sometimes though. I just had really big roadblocks for my clothing line. I didn't grow as much as I did last year and it was a downfall. So I didn't have the money to invest to double again. I'm all about doubling lately, doubling my income, doubling the revenue and doubling your partners. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And so I was like, okay, I can figure it out. And I figured it out. I got an investor for my holidays, which is really big for me. In your opinion, like, do you think this affects your romantic life at all? Oh yeah, for sure. I don't really have much time for relationships. I think what we're gathering is, you know, your business, all that stuff is very important and core to you. But you're also looking for love and for someone to complement and grow together in that regard. So, yeah, I think we're going to get to the root of it. Is it playing it cool, the problem, or is there something else going down? And we might as well get into your first flame, Sierra, who was at the time of recording, you two were dating. And she was the first woman that, to our understanding, that you really dated, even though you've identified as bisexual for a bit now. Our understanding also is it's kind of fizzled out since. Can you tell us a little more (laughs) what's going on? (laughs) Breaking news. So... I met her on Bumble. We met in person pretty quickly at an event I threw and she was very fun and flirty and maybe she didn't really think that we would go on a date, but we did. And I made sure to like show her that I was interested and I really enjoyed her company. She also was doing something that she loved that she prioritized, which also matters. And she was very like get what she wants. She went after it. She was pursuing me. I like all those traits. And I really liked her as a person. And I did see certain characteristics of what I'm looking for in a partner. So I was like, well, let's just like keep going with this because this is great. And then we did fizzle out. I think it's kind of partially I went through some things and I didn't feel like I could open up to people about it, especially not someone I'm not in a like a close relationship with. I couldn't share with her. And I think she kind of felt that. And I think she went through some things. I don't know. Like we've talked a little bit, but it's just not the same anymore. Let's hear what Sierra had to say. Honestly, when I first matched with Tia, I assumed that she was kind of a stuck up, super girly Newport girl that just liked to go out and party and sell her podcast and sell her coaching lifestyle and like didn't really believe what she was teaching. 
she actually invited me over to her house when she was doing a sex toy party where they sell sex toys to groups of women. So my best friend and I decided one night, why not go do it? And what made you, you know, despite having those concerns at the beginning, still want to go to this party? (laughs) Because she was attractive, I guess. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Like, I mean, that's just the truth. What are your first impressions of her? She is way more down to earth and much more chill than I thought. You know, she was kind of working the room and, and she was doing a really great job of hosting. She was definitely kind of like pulling the energy of the room. I do like women that, that can take charge too. Okay. Tell us a bit about how like things progress past that first sex toy party. I'm a chef. So she wanted me to teach her how to make some green curry. One Monday I was home. She asked me what I was doing and uh, I told her I was <laughs> making dinner and that I was going to go in the hot tub. So she came over and truth be told, I didn't really think that it was a date. I kind of just thought she was coming over to hang out. And uh, within like 15 minutes of us sitting in my kitchen, she mentioned that it was a date. And and you could tell, like she could tell I was kind of caught off guard by that. But like I didn't have my swag turned on, I guess. (laughs) (laughs) And then today, where are you two? Are you exclusive? Have you had those conversations? Um, I mean, I think she, you know, like she just got out of a pretty long relationship. And so I know that for her, like, it's still like kind of like more exploring out there, seeing, seeing what's out there and for me as well. So I don't think we're trying to establish any type of like exclusivity at all. Um, I think it's just more of open conversations. Like if, if she were to hook up with someone, like definitely give me a heads up. So I know, um, and vice versa. But I mean, right now, like my main focus is on Tia. And do you have any concerns or red flags that you're seeing? A fun fact about Tia, she doesn't like to make definitive plans. So to text her on a Monday and be like, hey, babe, you want to go out Saturday? We'll do X, Y, and Z at this time. She's like, <gasps> like, it kind of like freaks her out. Like she doesn't want to be stuck in like that, like time crunch. But other than that, I mean, for me, all I've ever really want in a relationship or in a partner is someone who's open and honest. And I can say that Tia has done that with me. So really, I mean, any feedback I can give her is just, you know, keep giving me the opportunity to get to know me, I guess. That kind of made me sad. Uh, Well, what did you think about Sierra's first impressions of you? She thought you were the typical Newport girl and then was very much surprised by how down to earth you are. I totally see what she's saying. And I do like to be, you know, presented well. So I get that. So she did not realize that you two were on a date. (laughs) Was this a surprise to you? Like, did you know that she didn't know? She was making me dinner. So like, (laughs) I thought for sure that was a date. She's making me dinner. Like, what? But I was like, oh, okay. There was wine. It was just, you know, us two. So yeah, I definitely thought it was a date. (laughs) Did you know that she was pretty serious about you? She was very much focused on you. Uh, I really like, and I was mostly dating her. I wasn't really seeing other people. And if I did, it wasn't like, it was like a first date type thing. She was like, yeah, I'll cook for you. I'll rub your feet while you're pregnant. And I was just like, because I do want kids. Uh, Yeah, that's a partner that I want. And then she matched a lot of the traits that I want in a partner. So like, how would I not want to? I guess the main thing was like the lifestyle type thing. I'm just, I'm kind of a different type of dater and so my last relationship was more like ethically non-monogamous okay so more open but monogamish taking a quick ad break and then we've got more exit interview craziness just for you Summer has flown by and I can't believe we're already gearing up for fall. Fall is by far my favorite time of year from the start of cuffing season to the fall fashion. Luckily, Quince makes shifting your wardrobe a breeze and a little too much fun because of their timeless and high quality items that allows my wardrobe to stay fresh without blowing my budget. The best part, all Quince items are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. I got their signature cashmere sweater and tan for only $50 and I cannot get over 
the price point for how silky soft the quality is. And I just feel so fancy that I have cashmere in my closet now and even happier that I got it at that affordable price. By partnering directly with top factories, Quince cuts out the cost of the middleman and passes the savings on to us. And Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices and premium fabrics and finishes. Make switching seasons a breeze with Quince's high quality closet essentials. Go to quince.com slash datable for free shipping on your order and 365 day returns. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash datable to get free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash datable. Hope you all are having the most magical summer and you know what would make it even better? Some feel good gummies from Via. Trusted by over 250,000 customers, Via's hemp products are the Swiss army knife of wellness. Like you need to chill out after a long day? Well, there's a Via gummy for that. Dealing with anxiety or stress? There's a gummy for that. Want to set the mood in the bedroom? Oh, there's definitely a gummy for that because Via has developed a unique blend of pleasure enhancing libido strengthening ingredients and a medium dose of THC all into one mind blowing gummy called High Love, which is our best selling gummy. It's also my go to because it completely awakens my senses and increases blood flow, making me feel so darn good either by myself or with a partner. If you're over 21, head to viahemp.com and use the code DATABLE to receive 15% off. That's V I I A hemp.com and use the code DATABLE, D A T E A B L E, at checkout. Please support our show and tell them we sent you. Take your passion and pleasure to a whole new level with high love from Via Hemp. My watch says we've gone three miles. This app is like having a personal trainer. Yeah, but those apps collect a lot of your personal data. Aren't you worried? Really? That's creepy. How do I stop that? You should go to privacy.ca.gov to learn about your privacy rights and get on the best path to protect your privacy. You think they could help us get up this next hill? Mm, One step at a time. (laughs) Californians have the strongest privacy protections in the country. Go the extra mile to protect your information. Learn more at privacy.ca.gov. America, we are endowed by our creator with certain unalienable rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. By honoring your sacred vocation of business, you impact your family, your friends, and your community. At Grand Canyon University, our MBA degree program is 100% online, with emphases in business analytics and finance to help you reach your goals. Find your purpose at GCU. Private. Christian. Affordable. Visit gcu.edu. It's more monogamous, like we are the sole partner, Mm -hmm. but then we can explore or communicate about things that a lot of hetero relationships don't communicate about. Mm -hmm. This was the on again, off again guy. Yeah. So I don't really want to not have that in my future. And with Sierra, that was kind of like a, oh, I'm not used to this because we communicated, but she's like, I'm not used to this. I don't know how to deal with this. I was like, okay, that I think was a road bump. I think one thing that's coming up, you know, back to this is being the cool girl getting in your way. There's a lot of just, you know, casualness to this, even though she did very much see you as the primary prospect. It felt very much like, oh, we'll just see what happens. She even mentioned that you didn't want to commit to plans a lot of times. What is your take on hearing that? Yeah, I guess I could work on that. (laughs) Um, My business does usually come first. Mm. So especially when I'm really busy, I'm just like, what if I get so busy and I'm stressed and I can't just like pause, turn off my brain and then go on a date. But I was trying to push myself to make better plans with her because I knew that was something. But yeah, it is kind of hard for me. This is an interesting comparison for you because when you said you are monogamish, I kept thinking, well, everything about your love life is ish. Like this is a date-ish. This is a relationship-ish. Everything is sort of, you live in this universe of ambiguity, but in your own professional life, 
you need to know exact sales numbers. You need to know how your business is doing. There's so much clarity in your professional life, but I don't see the same amount of clarity in your love life. And that could also be why there isn't the step forward towards relationship. The ish is becoming ish, you know, like you're just letting it just keep going as, as is. And, you know, when we hear from the other past flames, I think you'll see this come out a little bit more too. Anything else about Sierra before we move on to our next flame? No, I think we're good. Let's, let's take it. Let's, let's hear it. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> okay. Our next old flame. His name is Adam. You two met at a happy hour. You dated, became friends with benefits and then became friends. Why did you put Adam on your list? You know, we were friends with benefits. We didn't really have any type of relationship, but that type of character person, he's very caring and has a good heart. I trust him as a person. I could have seen being a relationship. It didn't happen that way at all, but like that I respect. And I'm like curious as what I could have done to maybe pursue that more. Maybe it was timing. I don't know. So I, I thought I could learn from him. Got it. And why do you think it ended? I mean, we're going to hear his thoughts, but why do you think it ended? Uh, we were just, we didn't communicate about that. And we did start as just like this ish thing. Like it was just, he was like the last straw for me to like really work on myself. Well, let's hear what Adam had to say. We met at a happy hour somewhere, socializing. Because, I, I, you know, I admire one of her uh, things she was wearing. And she was telling me that she makes them and uh, that's her brand and blah, blah, blah. And we connected on that. And that's how we met. And what attracted you to Tia? Her personality. It, it just, at the time, is the way she was chatting. And uh, she's very outgoing. And uh, Tia is a great hustler. She works hard and, and she was very sweet. And I'm all about energy and personality. So our understanding is that you were kind of friends with benefits. Well, we actually did it uh, from the beginning as well for several months. It just didn't work out because our, at the time of our life, things didn't align. Did you ever get the sense that Tia wanted something more? Did I think she wanted something? I think she did. And I kind of did too, but I never tried. I was in the right state of mind. And I don't think she was either. Does that mean that something was missing from your connection? Yes, some things were missing from our connection, I think, because of uh, the way it's just the communication barrier wasn't aligned properly. I just think there was a missing gap between us. I, I don't know. It was just there was one time I was explaining to her what I have coming off of my business and how much I'm growing. And she took it as if I was trying to compete with her or like, she was trying to compete with me, telling me, oh, yeah, I can do better. I can do this and that. I'm like, I'm not trying to compete with you. I'm just simply telling you what I got going on because you have, you simply asked. But she kind of have that, like, macho, like, want to be the macho man. I, <laughs> you know, I don't know. She put a wall somewhere. She has a wall. How did, like, the dating part end? Was there anything that happened or did it just fade out? I don't remember exactly the issue. But it was over something and she went off. I think she was she was not having it that day. She kind of felt like uh, all, all, I, all we were doing was just like hang out late nights and have sex. And, you know, that didn't go so well. I tried to spend as much time as we were, but it just wasn't working. Was it unexpected? Like, did you see this coming or was it a surprise to you? I don't know. She's, she's going through a phase in her life. She says she needs to like remove some people that are holding her back in her life. I'm trying to be there to help her with her business at all costs. I was like, show my whole support, but. Wait, how did she think that you were holding her back? I don't know. I don't know. She starts seeing other people. I start seeing other people or whatever. And we moved on from that. Because this is in the nature to help Tia, like, is there any feedback you would give her? Like, what do you think is holding her back? If anything, I could give her uh, any feedback, just some time to listen. <laughs> I needed some growth, for sure. Tell us more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's good. We're all, we're all growing. We're all growing. Yes. I didn't know how to let people help me. Mm -hmm. And that's what my last relationship really taught me was really to get into that feminine energy and be not the leader, which I actually really enjoy. 
neither of you really defined what this was at all. And then ultimately, there were some communication issues. You didn't really have series of talks until it was over. What do you think about the communication end? Yeah, like, should you, when do you talk about it? Because we're taught as women now, like, don't bring it up. Don't have the relationship talk. And it's like, Mm. okay, when do you? But yeah, I guess you, you got to bring it up, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're definitely seeing the theme of ambiguous situations, the ish again, right? Mm-hmm. So that yes. definitely keeps surfacing. And, you know, it's it's good to be the cool girl in the sense that people want to hang out with you. You're fun to be around. But we don't want you to be the cool girl that suppresses your own needs. It just goes along until you want to end it, right? <laughs> yeah, that is kind of what I do. Why did you break up with him? I I remember. I even remember writing the message in my bed, uh-huh. like to him. I was just in those ish relationships and I was sick of it. And there was no, are we even dating? Like it got to the point where it was so ishy that I really didn't know. <laughs> I had no clue. I was like, yeah. am I his friends with benefits? Does he even like me as a person? Like I just had no idea where, you know, I could have just been like, I guess, asked or say I wanted to date. But I honestly couldn't have said that. It would have hurt me to say, hey, I'd like to actually date. Are you interested? Mm. Even with Sierra, we're finding room to continue to grow with it and be a little more direct. I want to go into our next flame, Dietrich. (laughs) We'll be right back after this short break. What's the easiest choice you can make? Window instead of middle seat? Picking a vendor who sends a great gift basket? Outsourcing business tasks you hate? What about selling with Shopify? Whether you're selling a little or a lot, Shopify helps you do your thing, however you cha-ching. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real-life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage, Shopify is there to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell. Wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash try. Go to shopify.com slash try now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash try. go into our next flame, Dietrich, (laughs) who you two met on a dating app that he couldn't remember which one. Do you remember which one? Yeah, it's Hinge. Okay, Hinge. You know, Dietrich, we definitely have a little twist at the end for this one. But before (laughs) we go into that, like, why did you want us to talk to Dietrich? He was somebody that I also like his character. And I think he's a good person. And he seemed like he wanted to build and grow. But I don't know. I don't know. (laughs) Mm, okay (laughs) so he has some good characteristics um he values similar things hard work he's also fun respectful I don't go often on more than three dates with people and I I really enjoyed his company who came first Adam or Dietrich oh Adam years ago and Dietrich was on one of my breaks from my past relationship so how many years ago for Dietrich Actually, only about a year. Okay. Just so our listeners can understand the timeline, Adam first of several years, Dietrich, and then Sierra was the most recent. Yeah. Why do you think things ended between you and Dietrich? There was no communication. Like (laughs) on either part? I think I tried, but there was no communication and I was just so sick of it. I I guess I get to this point where I don't want to nag. I don't want to be this like whiny person and I think I don't, if I already say it once or twice, what what do I do then? That's cool girl syndrome to the T, mm-hmm. right? Is I yep. don't want to state my needs. Uh, I'm just going to play it cool and see what happens. But the problem with that is you eventually snap, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was just done. I was like, okay, he's not talking to me. I'm just, okay, bye. I mm. feel like it's time to hear from Dietrich on yes. his perspective. Okay. Please. I mean, she kind of came off as 
I guess, what we would call uh, alpha-ish. Very um, strong eye contact. All of those body language things were all hitting 100 plus. And she was like direct and engaged. So is this a turn on or a turn off? (laughs) I think for a lot of people, it may be a little intimidating. But um, for me, it was a turn on. What happened that first time you met up? Kind of started off with some drinks. So we were right close to the beach and the the path, you know. So we stopped there and got warmed up and then left there and went straight to the beach and just kind of hung out there and made a day of it. How much did you like Tia? I liked her a lot because she, she checked all of my boxes, right, as far as what I look for in a woman. We had a lot of work to do as far as communicating on both parts and letting each other know what we needed. And also, I think, exposing some of our insecurities. Were you seeing other people during this time? Yes. Okay. How serious was this? I don't think it was. It wasn't too serious on either of our parts. In your opinion, were you kind of giving them a consistent amount of effort? That's that's always been my issue, and um, it just fell off. I think it was a lack of communication. She wasn't getting the attention that she thought she needed. I got focused on work and everything that happens with that and distracted big time. It just wasn't enough for her, and things had changed. I guess she wanted to take it in another direction, and I didn't get that memo. If she had come to you, asking for things to be a little bit more serious, what would have been your feedback and response? I would have definitely been willing to go forward with it because it was always something on my mind. I was just basically wondering if and when it would happen. And how did it actually end? There were no signs. In my mind, there were no signs. I didn't see anything. I didn't hear anything. I didn't notice anything. It may have been a few texts, like, it just totally came out of left field, man. It was, blam, I'm basically, like, she was ready to end it. It kind of sounded like she had already made up her mind. And uh, it's kind of like we don't get the chance to talk about it before the decision has been made. And I felt like I expected more than that from her. So I was offended. And I just probably said, okay. Have you spoken to her since? Yes. (laughs) Okay. In what capacity? Okay, so she kind of gave me a heads up about the whole interview thing, right? It just took off from there. and What? Because of us? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we almost immediately met back up, started going out, had a couple of dates since then. and See, so yeah. are you guys seeing each other actively now? <laughs> what is happening? Yeah. <laughs> Cool. <laughs> because that opened the door for that conversation to happen about what happened. Yeah. Okay. And we were able to push past it. Wow. And what's one thing you hope that she'll do differently this time around? Open up more. But there are some things that I would like her to voice directly. And I think like that comes from those deep down insecurities and and that in in turn that would also give me the okay to open up as well (laughs) so much to unpack so many twists and turns i know (laughs) it's a lot but i think what's obvious is you and dietrich had a lot of chemistry he he really liked you Mm -hmm. or likes you it's probably in the present tense were you aware that he could have wanted something more if you had voiced that? No, I had no idea. Because he just, I'm just not used to somebody that's interested in somebody that doesn't give them more attention. Like, he'll just disappear for like a week if I just don't get it. And so I'm just like, okay, he's not interested. Hmm. I think this keeps the theme going of almost expecting people to be mind readers, right? Um, and not having those <laughs> conversations. Yeah. And yeah, in a perfect world, this person would be giving you all the attention. But I think what we're learning here is that we don't really know what's going on for other people if we never ask them. And we just bottle it up and then come at them at the end 
they just get confused too because they're like, where did this come from? It's kind of what's happening right now with him and I. <laughs> yeah. So oh, like, yeah? let's go there. What's <laughs> let's go day? There. <laughs> it was like, is this just going to be the same repeat? And he knows what I need a little bit more. And I just feel like I'm like going to be knocking on a dead horse, like trying to get a different reaction. Because right now I'm like, I just do need a little bit more attention, I guess. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I feel like going a week without talking to your significant other is not ideal. But what it might make sense to be more direct, like, hey, I need a partner that's going to like communicate with me throughout the day, if that's what you really need, or whatever schedule, figuring that out what works for you too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I guess I have a question to that. When do you stop giving somebody a chance? Mm -hmm. Because like on one side, I just kind of like cut people off. Yeah. But on the other side, you know, it does take some communication to see if things mm -hmm. change. But like, when do you just, oh, okay, this isn't a future partner. Let's cut it off. That's a million dollar question we try to answer every week on our Dateable podcast. And here's where we net it. Tia, it's this. So I want to customize this to you. You giving the first impression that you've got your shit together, you're assertive, badass woman, you know what you're doing in life is exact reason why you're attracting people. I mean, everybody we spoke to was mm -hmm. like, I was so drawn to Tia's energy, right? But then I think what happens is they think you're going to drive the relationship mm -hmm. because that's the first impression you give. So they're waiting for you to say what you want. And when you don't end up doing that, I think what I'm hearing you say is taking a back seat and wanting to be pursued. I don't actually know if that will give you what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. I think what will give you what you're looking for is communicating what you're looking for. These don't feel like partnerships. These feel like yeah. me versus you. Are you going to step up? And if you do, I, that will give me permission to step up. What if Tia that you change your mindset, this will answer your questions, when do you give people a chance? Set people up for success. Mm -hmm. That's the mindset. If I'm setting yeah. someone up for success, like Dietrich, I'm going to set him up for success by saying, I really love hearing from you. When I hear from you, it makes me happy. That's when I know that you are interested. If he takes that chance, that means he also wants to be in this with you. If he does it, you can say bye. Right. Yeah. That is okay. No more chances because you already did your very best. Yeah. I mean, I think what we're seeing from this whole thing, it's amazing that you are so goal oriented. You're confident. You know what you want. You're ready to go after it in your professional life. Yeah. What we need is the same energy in your personal life. I can identify with you because I've been here before. Yeah. I've been in that on again, off again relationship too that did not state my needs, kind of just bolted when things got hard instead of working through it. And that ultimately though is the relationship part is when you can meet each other, but no one can meet you if you're not allowing them to meet you. I just, I don't want to be that pursuant person, the one that's always trying to make it work. And that's what I did with my past relationships is I was like, Oh, let's go do this. Oh, let's go do this. And I just felt like it was one sided. And so I just don't want to go on the opposite side, I guess. And we're not telling you to do that. No, absolutely not telling you to do that. We do not <laughs> want you to be in a one sided relationship. Yeah. We've also been there before. We've seen other listeners of our other podcast, Dateable, be there before. It's a common thing, especially as women, that we do is we kind of adapt to the yeah. needs of others. Mm -hmm. We're not saying that. Yeah. What we are saying, though, is how do you get crystal clear of what is it that I need to feel in a relationship? What qualities are important to me? And that might not be the ones that you're thinking about today. Mm -hmm. Like I think you place a big emphasis on professionalism and just what their profession is. But you know, that's important. We're not going to say like, don't do that. But you also need someone that can give you the time. Yeah, It's almost coming at the sacrifice of a relationship with that. So how do you get clear about it? And how do you find someone that wants to be a team with you and work with you? And if you're not getting that, 
like stating like, hey, like this is what I need. I feel like this isn't happening. And it doesn't have to be in a confrontational, mean way. It's an art of like, how do you have these conversations? They don't come out of nowhere. Yeah. Well, I'm going to try and do that with two of those with Dietrich and with Sierra, just even to like have an ending or know where it is instead of this like vague air. I would actually challenge you to stop thinking about the pursuing Mm -hmm. and the sitting back and waiting to be pursued. But what if instead of pursuing, you're in a place of attracting? That's what it is. And you already have this attracting energy about you. You're getting the people in the door. Mm -hmm. Now it's about how do we collaborate as a team? Mm -hmm. And when both people want to be stepping up for each other, you no longer have that pursuing mentality. Yeah. No, I, I like that. You need someone that's going to collaborate with you. And we've seen this a lot. It's, you know, bad books like Why Men Love Bitches or the rules that tell us to (laughs) hold back. Right. It's like we're not going to be desirable. All that is bullshit. Like that is just suppressing who you are and not showing people the authentic Tia. No. And it's less about the masculine and the feminine. Just show people who you are as you, you know, like it's Tia. That's all you need to focus on. Here's the thing. You do a podcast. You're introspective. You're a clear communicator. What if you brought that into your love life? (laughs) We always say like, make your inner dialogue, your outer dialogue. Like in the situation with Dietrich, say, I'm feeling a little uneasy by the lack of communication. Can we talk about it? Or what do you think about that? Yeah. You're being vulnerable, but at the same time, you're stating a need and keeping him in the loop. What you don't want to happen is exactly what happened the last time where you get all this pent up resentment. Yeah. yeah. And then you write him a novel of a text of all the things that went wrong. And he's like, where the hell did this all come from? Just keep him in the loop. Hey, I'm feeling a little uneasy or I'm so excited to see you. It makes me so glad that I'm we've reconnected. This feels very special. That brings him into your world. And it's no longer like, hmm, I wonder what he's doing. Are we back to our old ways? You don't have to be wondering anymore. Yeah, I will do that. I'm going to try these things and obviously put how I am into the relationship because yeah, I am more direct in like all areas of my life. So it's kind of weird that I'm not in my relationships. Yeah. I might even just call them both. Yes. No texting. No (laughs) texting actually in person or calling. It needs to be a two-sided convo (laughs) or close a loop. I think that's all we really need to do in dating is give people the respect to close the loop so that we don't let things become ish. I know that with Sierra, I do want to follow up and just kind of see where we were. I think we might. I'm just assuming a lot of things, to be honest. In your business, you wouldn't make these assumptions. You would Mm -mm. just ask and get clarity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for both of them, I just kind of want to see what's going on. And your runner mentality is also super relatable because mm-hmm. we feel like, well, mm-hmm. you know, I'm <laughs> I'm succeeding at every other aspect of my life. So if this is not working, I'm going to run away from it because it's a bad situation. I did that for years thinking, well, if he's not meeting what I'm looking for, I'm going to run away from it. What you're actually doing is running away from yourself. You're running Mm -hmm. away from the opportunity to learn and grow Mm -hmm. and you're running away from the opportunity to communicate. I would also challenge you to whenever you have that inkling to run, because as we all know, it's going to happen. You say, I'm going to run towards this person instead of running away. And what, how would my actions change if I'm running towards this person? Yeah. I guess what I'd love to hear from you is, you know, communication is a good word, but it's a broad word. What do you actually want from these people? Hold tight. This exit interview will continue in just a moment. What do you actually want from these people? With Sierra, I kind of just want to talk to her and just see where things were or why it fizzled out. I think I know why on my end, but I don't know why on hers. Mm -hmm. And then with Dietrich, I would like to understand him a little bit more and just kind of, 
I, I am going to bring up like, Hey, I'm just letting you know, I had a really rough month and I'd love to mm -hmm. follow up now. That way, you know, we don't end things the same exact way that we ended last time. So let's communicate and get on the phone and let's talk about it. And like, yeah, just kind of have that conversation, kind of clarity with him. Mm -hmm. I think it's really good to hear where they're coming from. Absolutely. But I want you to even go a little deeper of like, what is it that you want? What yeah. do you want? What is your need that you're going to ask for? Yeah, well, my need is communication with Dietrich and following up like texting, texting, calling like a few times a week to talk, communicate, get on the phone, see how we're doing. It doesn't have to be text. I'm very busy. I actually don't really like texting. I like that. But the cool girl syndrome is coming out. It's like the, I want to get on the phone, but you know, we don't have to text because I'm busy. You know, I'm, I'm busy. Like we can make <laughs> this casual. I can be cool about it, but if it happens, that's great. If it doesn't, it's cool. So let's counterbalance that. I think what you're, what you're wanting to get out of G trick is you like hearing his voice. You like being in his presence. So let's start there. The need is. Like you want to be in his presence and you can say that to him. I love hearing your voice on the phone. It would make me so happy if we can chat on the phone like twice a week. How do you feel about that? That to me is not nagging. That's like, yeah. damn. Oh, I, I mean, mm -hmm. if I were teacher, I'd be like, why wouldn't I do that? I would make her so happy. <laughs> right. You know, and as soon as it feels out of control, when do you give up? Like, when do you stop pushing? Mm -hmm. When someone's unable to meet your request, yeah. knowing what works for you and doesn't. And if you say, actually, that's not enough, yeah. then you know, like, you know that you two do not have the same capacity. Mm -hmm. But this new mentality that we're talking about today, like Tia, you're in control. Ultimately, it's what is going to help you find the partnership for you. And maybe it's saying goodbye to some of these people that are ambiguous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest takeaway for you, it's like, how do you get in touch with your needs and yes. state them? Because the cool girl just suppresses them. And we don't want you to suppress them anymore. <laughs> we want you to be able to put them out there. This came at like the perfect timing too, because I was like, just kind of writing it off and going back into that like, oh, no, okay, I'm done. So <laughs> it's good. <laughs> It's good to observe what people bring out of you. Dietrich is definitely bringing out a little anxiety in you. We sense that. Mm -hmm. Sierra's bringing out this like calm side of you where you almost feel there's like sadness in there, mm -hmm. which is also interesting. I would explore that a little bit more and maybe you can share that with her. That might bring you too closer, whatever that may mean in this situation. Yeah, I'm going to do that. So that's my thing that I'm going to continue to do. So have we answered the question, is playing it cool getting in the way of what you want? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think, uh, yeah. It's good to be cool, but not in the sense that it suppresses everything and makes mm -hmm. very ambiguous situations. Yeah, that just turn into ish and fizzle out. <laughs> exactly. Yes, no more ish. No more ish. That's like my new phrase. <laughs> so what's one action you're going to take outside of these conversations, which we know you're already going to do? Uh, stating my needs, maybe being open for more dating. And when I do date, letting them know what I'm looking for. And then once I figure out that they're not in alignment to not keep seeing them, even though it's fun, which is going to be hard for me. I will say I'll try and state my needs before I get all pent up. And that puts you in the badass bitch that you are, right? Like that's your mm -hmm. brand. Let's carry that yes. over to dating. Yes. Let's yes. get it. Sexy Love biz it. babe. Yes. <laughs> and we look forward to hearing back from you, whether it's Dietrich, Sierra, Neither of them. That's also okay. If it turns out neither of them meet your needs. Mm -hmm. And we know you're going to find your person. We just know it. Oh, Thanks again for being part of this. Yes, you're welcome. I will find somebody. Yes. Damn right. What a conversation. You know we love talking about cool girl syndrome. As you probably have gathered... Because we both have been there before, we could relate. <laughs> I think it really resonated with Tia. I 
could see the wheels turning for her and realizing that her coolness is not helping. No, because the coolness just means you're not communicating your needs. Why is this so difficult? We all think we can communicate because we can talk a lot, but how you say something is so much more important than even what you're saying. People think communicating means talking. (laughs) No, that's not communication skills. You can talk in parallel. Communicating is relational. We are listening as part of that communication. Mm -hmm. So this conversation with Tia, again, so relatable. And I'm so proud of her because Mm -hmm. I think we broke through to her. She understands now that she needs to advocate for herself and she can't hold other people accountable for the things that she never communicated. I still think it would be a really good learning experience for her to state her needs, even if she's not well met. I don't want her to get discouraged by it, though. No. And I am I have so much confidence in her. She is such a wonderful participant in all of this. And uh, we wish her a swift recovery from cool girl syndrome. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we're excited about our guest next week for a whole lot of other reasons. Can we just say a drama with a capital D? <laughs> you won't want to miss it. You do not want to miss this drama. So make sure to subscribe today. Give us a five-star rating if you love this episode so we can keep doing more exit interviews. And while you're at it, you can follow us on Instagram at Exit Interview Show and Twitter at X Interview Show. We'll see you next week. Bye. This episode was coordinated by Katia Kupalian, creative produced by Samantha Martin, and edited by Jen Jacobs. We are produced by Abigail Steckler at Little Scorpion Studios, with executive producers Yue Shu, Julie Krafchik, and Frolic Media. This is an iHeartRadio podcast. Here we go, don't linger up. I don't want to stay here no more. Just take a look around us. It's time to move on. The Dateable Podcast is part of the Frolic Media Network. Find more podcasts you'll love at frolic.media slash podcasts. You can follow us on Instagram at Dateable Podcast and visit datablepodcast.com for access to all the episodes and our premium programs. Also, make sure to subscribe today if you haven't already on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcast platform so you are the first to get all the latest episodes. And most importantly, stay dateable. Before you leave this episode, just a reminder to head over to datablepodcast.com slash programs if you want to get in on our Meeting People IRL Masterclass and see what else we have in store. Back to school savings are officially in session at Tanger Outlets. Shop the latest school styles with an extra 25% off during Tanger Style, our biggest sale of the season, now through August 25th. Plan your trip at tanger.com.